Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, so last lecture, um, last two lectures actually, we introduced ordinary differential equations. So systems of the form, uh, let's say y dot equals f of y. <coughs> Um, or more generally, we could say, um, more generally, we could have y dot equals a function of time and space. This is how I think of it as y is kind of space and t is time. So my function, my nonlinear function or vector field might actually be changing. So let's think about what that means. Um, well, a really nice simple example, let's say that I have the ocean, I'm always terrible at drawing continents, so I'm barely going to try. And let's say I have some passive buoy that's just floating on the ocean. You get shipwrecked or you're on a raft and you're just hanging out on the ocean, drifting around. So the actual fluid velocity field at the surface of the ocean changes every day and every hour due to wind and solar radiation and all kinds of factors. Earthquakes under the ocean can cause, you know, all kinds of stuff can happen. And so our vector field, this is why, uh, our vector field would be the actual directions that my fluid vector points this might change in time, and it might change with my location. Okay, so this is just a little more general. Now, um, <coughs> in the last two lectures, we introduced forward and backward Euler. We tried them out on some numerical examples, and we looked at their stability and error accuracy. Um, and I'm just going to write them down to refresh your memory. So forward Euler. Um, Euler was one of the greatest mathematicians who ever lived. He advanced every uh, field of mathematics and physics that he touched tremendously. Um, okay, so y k plus 1. I don't want to give Euler a bad name because his uh, integration method is not so great, um, but it's very great for analysis. So notice I'm going to start introducing um, this potential time and space varying vector field. Okay, so this is a little different than before, but not much. And backward Euler is similarly yk plus 1 equals yk plus delta t um, f evaluated still at um, now at tk plus 1 and y at k plus 1. So if this function f is at all nasty, it might be very hard to solve for y k plus 1, my next uh, point in the trajectory. Okay? Okay, and both methods had pretty poor global error. So both uh, methods have poor global error. And in fact, the order delta t global error. Okay, so that means that the only way to get a more accurate trajectory is to take a smaller and smaller and smaller time step, <coughs> which can be very frustrating if you're waiting around for your simulation all day long. Okay, um, this uh, raft floating in the ocean maybe is just kind of a silly example, but if you recall, uh, just a few years ago there was a enormous upwelling of oil in the Gulf of Mexico. And there was a tremendous effort in the applied mathematics uh, and engineering communities to figure out where little blobules of oil go in a time varying vector field. Okay, so this is something we're gonna be talking about for the next maybe four lectures. Um, we might have some homeworks on it, but you know, this is a toy kind of funny example, but this is actually a very, very serious problem. Like, it turns out they dump pollution off of the coast uh, of California, which is terrible, but if you're going to pollute um, off of the coast of one of the most beautiful places, it turns out there are better places than others. Um, and learning how to integrate these vector fields is um, a tool to assess that. Okay, so both methods had poor global um, error properties, and so what I would like to do is cook up a method that has a higher order accuracy. 
Okay, and in principle, I should be able to do this um, just using Taylor expansions and some basic math. Okay. Okay, good. So um, let's see. How do I want to proceed? So this uh, next part, we're actually going to derive a generic integrator. Okay. So let's try uh, generic. And when I say generic integrator, what I mean is that it's an integrator that has uh, undetermined coefficients, which I consider knobs I can turn to make it better or worse at integrating. OK, so we're going to tune it for small error. Good. And my generic integration. Um, is going to look like y k plus 1 equals y k plus delta t phi. OK, so this actually has very much the same form as forward Euler and backward Euler. So let's just go over here. right? These both have the form y k plus delta t times some function phi. They just have different functions phi. OK, and we are going to choose. phi to reduce error. OK. All right, good. Um, now, in what follows, we're going to be doing a fair bit of kind of tedious involved math. OK? And I wish there was a way around it. Um, I've debated about whether or not I should show it to you. Um, I think it's really important, okay? It's the kind of thing that even if you just get a flavor of how these procedures are going to get this, um, this higher order, better integrator, it's a really useful uh, set of principles to be aware of and to know how to do. Um, I think of it like going to the gym or eating broccoli, right? Like you don't always want to do it, but it makes you stronger. Um, these are really useful tools. So I'm also aware that it's possible to watch these lectures in one and a half speed. Um, so if you would like to do that, I know that if I could give this lecture at one and a half speed, I would, uh, at least the next short part of it. So if there's anything really, really important um, where I want us to take a big step back, I'll try to remember to wave my hands. All right. OK, good. So. We're going to try to create a generic integrator by shaping some function phi <coughs> that gives us reduced error. Okay, and I'm just going to say this very clearly so we have it written down. The idea is instead of phi just being the slope of f at some point, which is what forward Euler does. So instead of this being uh, the slope at, uh, say, t k, y k, in the case of forward Euler, or t k plus 1, y k plus 1, in the case of backward Euler, <coughs> right? That's exactly what phi is in the case of forward and backward Euler. We just take. Uh, the slope y dot evaluated at this point or this point. Instead of doing that, we're going to use the slope at some intermediate point. Okay, we're going to use the slope. Um, we're still going to use it at tk, yk, but we're also going to use the slope or the vector field at another point. So and at another point. And this point is going to be um, tk plus p delta t. That's my time coordinate. And yk plus q delta t times f evaluated at tk yk. OK, and this is all 
of the magic, okay? Just by introducing these two additional parameters, P and Q, I have the ability to kind of tune up my integrator and make it a little fancier, okay? So uh, I can, I'm using the slope at TK, YK, right? That's just like forward Euler. But I'm also going to evaluate my vector field at this point in time and this point in space. And maybe that gives me some more information that's useful. Okay, so the last line on this board, what we're going to say is this gives me a new integration scheme, y k plus one equals y of k plus delta t times, now right, y k plus delta t times phi. And my phi is going to be, remember I said I'm still going to use uh, t k y k but I don't know how much I'm going to use it. And then I'm also going to evaluate my vector field at this new location in time and space. So t k plus p delta t, y k plus q delta t, f of t k y k. Okay, so this whole thing here is phi. Okay, so this looks a little complicated. Um, it is a little complicated, but it's really, it's not so bad. Let's say that I make b equal to zero and a equals one. Well, I just recover forward Euler, okay? And really what I'm doing is I'm evaluating, I'm taking a forward Euler step, I'm evaluating, <coughs> excuse me, I evaluate my vector field at t k y k, and then I use that information to take a step forward, some small amount, and I evaluate my vector field there, okay? <coughs> so we get to choose a, b, p, and q to make this have better um, error properties. Okay, so let's do that. And just to be very explicit, I'm gonna write that up. We say we get to choose A, B, P, and Q. Um, now, what we really wanna do is we wanna match the Taylor series of Y at time T, K plus delta T. All right, so that's, that's always how we assess the error of a system. So it stands to reason that if I want an iteration that gives me really good error properties, I should just tailor expand what I think my state should look like and try to match terms as high as I can possibly go. Okay? Right, so we're gonna match the Taylor series of y at tk plus delta t. Okay, sounds pretty, pretty good. Okay. Um, Okay, and I wanna just go back here one for one moment. So I could choose P and Q uh, to be anything I like, but I think what makes the most sense is if P and Q are equal to each other, then this is actually one small Euler step, a small forward Euler step in the future. So let's write that up. So if P equals Q, then uh, t k plus p delta t and y k plus q delta t f of uh, t k y k. This is a small forward Euler step. This is a small, and I'm gonna say small p delta t Right, if p equals q, then this is a small p delta t forward Euler step. Okay, and I'm going to assume that p is less than one, right? Because I'm trying to take a dt integration in the future, so I'm going to use um, f at t k y k, and I'm also going to take a small forward Euler step, maybe p is one half, maybe I take a half Euler step, 
and I use the vector field at that point to give me a better estimate. Okay, this is the idea of what's going on here. This makes sense. So we're going to assume that P equals Q and everything makes sense. Okay, so here is where all of the uh, heavy duty math comes in. So on the left board, um, let's see, I should label some of these things. Yeah, so why don't we call this big equation here star? Okay, this is star. This is our integrator. Um, this is kind of the base object we're going to be working with. Okay, so now what we're going to do is Taylor expand the last term in star. Okay, and I'm going to write that up. Um, the last term in star <coughs> is f at uh, tk plus p delta t and yk plus q delta t f at tk yk. Um, this is how I have it in the notes with p and q still different, but for this lecture I'm going to try to be consistent and just use p. I think it makes more sense. But if I slip up, uh, please be aware that for everything that follows, P is going to equal Q. Okay? So this is the last term in my star equation. This is the time slot, and this is the Y slot. Here's my big comma. Okay? And we're going to Taylor expand this. So Taylor expansion of a multivariable function is not a lot more complicated than a function of a single variable. I'm going to Taylor expand about the point TK, YK which means I'm going to be taking partial derivatives with respect to time and partial derivatives with respect to y. Okay, not so bad. So this equals, okay, f of t, k, y, k. I think of this as my base point that I'm uh, linearizing about. Plus p delta t times partial f partial t evaluated at my base point, uh, tk, yk. Okay, I just took the partial of this slot um, and evaluated it at my base point, plus um, p delta t times partial f partial y evaluated at tk, yk. Now, I took the partial of this with respect to y, so I get um, this term times an f, right? I'm applying the chain rule, and this additional f that depends on y pops out. So times f of t, k, y, k, plus order delta t squared. Okay, so let's just um, make sure that I did everything right here. I'm Taylor expanding this function, so I take the partial with respect to the first slot. Technically, if I, if I expanded this and took the partial with respect to the time derivative, I would evaluate it at tk and then everything on the right, yk plus p delta t f at tk yk. But then I can Taylor expand that and get another order delta t term. So order delta t times delta t all goes into my higher order terms. Um, and this term would be the only delta t that pops out. So you can kind of go through, um, it's a few more lines to really uh, get to this point, okay? But this last f comes in because of a chain rule, and there's some terms that get lumped into order delta t squared that I'm not really worrying about right now. Okay, good. Um, <coughs> so now if I plug this into my last term in star, I get, um, okay, so I get equation star becomes, let's see if I can write them close to each other, yk plus one equals yk. Let's just look at our equation star real quick. Uh, it's yk plus delta t a f plus b, and then the thing I Taylor expanded. Okay, so all of this is gonna remain the same, and then I'm gonna plug in my Taylor expansion here. This is uh, exact, 
There's no Taylor expansion yet. Okay, so we get yk plus one equals yk plus the first term plus delta t a plus b f at t k y k. Right, this b f of t k y k came from the first term in our Taylor expansion. Plus p times b delta t squared times the partial derivative with respect to t. Here I'm using uh, f subscript t, that means partial f partial t. Let's just write that out, uh, partial f partial t. That's um, this term here, right? And we pick up a b because we're multiplying this term by a b. Plus another p b delta t squared times the partial with respect to y. Okay, so partial f, partial y, we're just gonna call that f sub y. Okay, t k, y k, times f of t k, y k, plus order delta t cubed. Okay, so why did I pick up a delta t here and here, and why is my error now, instead of order delta t squared, why is it delta t cubed? Well, it's because this last term that we Taylor expanded here on the left board, this last term here gets multiplied, excuse me, by a delta t. So, so in, our, in our equation on the left board for, um, for phi, phi is multiplied by a delta t. So everything in the Taylor expansion gets another delta t. Okay, so this is what we started with. This was uh, something we just cooked this up out of thin air. We have all the freedom in the world to choose a, b, p, and q. And then over here, what we did was we said, well, p equals q makes sense. And then we're going to expand um, and match terms of a Taylor series, okay? Okay, so this is what we get when we plug our Taylor series into um, our cooked up integration scheme. And now what we're going to do is compare it with uh, our Taylor series for the actual solution. Okay. So this is, uh, believe it or not, this is the last kind of pretty hairy step of the math. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. Um, but just bear with me. So I think I forgot to wave my arms and tell you to slow down. Um, really, this key concept here is something we should slow down about and recognize that uh, by setting p equal to q, we're taking a small uh, kind of half or quarter or three quarters Euler step and getting we're kind of probing the vector field for more information. This is really the key idea of all of these uh, integration schemes. I'm gonna tell you about this family of Runge Kutta. Okay, so back to one and a half speed, and we're going to, uh, we're gonna compare with the Taylor series. Okay, we're gonna compare with the Taylor series for our exact uh, y at time, tk plus delta t, okay? So we have um, this kind of equation that we've posited. We've plugged in the Taylor expansion of this last term. We have a bunch of terms, and what we're going to do is choose a, b, and p to match the Taylor so series of our exact solution up to as high of order as possible. Sounds pretty simple, okay? So this next part, I'm gonna write down three lines of math and then we're gonna compare terms, okay? And this is all, I uh, published the notes online, so you have a PDF copy of these notes. Um, so you can kind of go through step by step and see if it all makes sense. Okay, so why TK plus delta T? Well, what's the first step? Well, what point are we linearizing about in time? 
tk, right? So we say this equals y, uh, y at tk is yk. <coughs> y at tk plus delta t uh, d y dt at tk plus a second derivative, delta t squared over 2 d squared y dt squared at tk plus order delta t cubed. Okay, I'm going to keep track of all of my third order error terms because that's how many, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep track of my second order terms and lump all the error into third order terms because that's what I did uh, for my other expression. Okay, good. So this is pretty straightforward. This is just Taylor expanding y without assuming anything about the dynamics, y dot equals f of y. But we do know that dy dt is f. So this equals, and we also know that y at tk is yk, right? My trajectory at time tk is y sub k plus delta t, now this is f, right? dy dt is f of t and y. tk, yk. Now this term is where some of the headache comes from. Okay, so what we're going to say is we're just gonna pop one of these derivatives out. We're gonna say delta t squared over two d d t of f of t k y k plus order delta t cubed. Okay, so I still have this d d t of f <coughs> that might or might not be a little uh, complicated, okay? All right, so let's um, take one more line. So the first two terms don't change, those are good. So this equals y k plus delta t f t k comma y k plus delta t squared over two times the time derivative of this thing. Okay, now the time derivative of this, not so bad, I take the partial of f with respect to t. So I say, remember this is partial f partial t is f underscore t. This is just, um, this is just uh, applying the chain rule um, and getting partial derivatives, okay? Plus, now this is the thing that's interesting. Yk is actually a function of time. So I have to take partial f partial yk, partial y, dot dy dt. That's the chain rule, okay? So this is plus partial f partial y. I'm taking a derivative in the second slot because this depends on time, times dy dt. Well, what's dy dt? f of y. Okay, let's make sure that looks right, okay? So this is equal to y dot at tk. Okay, <clears throat> so this is most of, uh, of the effort, okay? This is most of the effort. Let's see if there's anything else I should be worrying about. Um, well, okay, let's go to this other board and just see how things are laid out. So my expression that I'm comparing with, this is my, my integrator. I have yk plus one equals yk plus a term that's just delta t times f plus a term that's delta t squared times partial f partial t plus a term that's delta t squared times partial f partial y times f, okay? So the last thing I'm going to do in the left board is I'm just going to break this up into the exact same four terms, okay? This is really just a very simple algebra right now, okay? So this equals uh, yk plus dt f tk yk 
plus delta t squared over 2ft, t, k, y, k, plus delta t squared over 2fy, t, k, y, k, times f, t, k, y, k, plus order delta t cubed. Okay, I'm going to box this equation. This is important. I'm going to box this equation. So this actually will probably make the most sense if you actually have the physical notes in front of you because then these two things are on the same page and uh, we don't have to jump back and forth between boards. But what I'm going to do now is just get expressions for what all of the coefficients a, b, p uh, have to be for this to equal my other expression up to order delta t cubed. Okay. So let's just get that. Okay. Let's see. I think I'd like this in blue. Okay. Um, well, the first term, yk, is equal to the first term in my other board, yk. And the second term, uh, let's see, my second term, delta t f t k on this board is delta t a plus b f k. So my first condition is a plus b equals one. Okay, uh, now I have delta t squared um, partial f partial t times pb. So the coefficient here is uh, pb delta t squared. And over here on the left board, the coefficient is delta t squared over 2. Okay? So what that tells me is that pb has to equal 1 half. Okay, and recall that we also have, um, on the right board now, we also have P equals Q. Okay, so these are the conditions. Um, these are our unknowns. Our unknowns are um, A, B, C, sorry, P and Q. <coughs> and there's actually a lot of choices. So there are, there are many such integrators, it turns out. There are lots of integrators of this form that will have exact agreement with the Taylor series up until third order. So they'll have order delta t cubed uh, error properties. But I'm going to show you the most popular choice. Okay, this is the most popular choice has a name. Let's see. Uh, okay. Okay, so for those of you who are watching at one and a half times, this is kind of the highlight, one of the, the highlights. So the most popular choice of these uh, parameters that we get to tune are A equals zero, B equals one, and remember, p times b has to equal 1 half, so p has to equal uh, q, and that equals 1 half. These are the most popular parameters, and what that gives us is this uh, second order integration scheme, yk plus 1 equals yk plus um, b is 1, so I get a delta t f evaluated at tk plus delta t over 2, right, this is my p times delta t, and at yk plus delta t over 2 times ftk yk. 
This is my um, Q times delta T, and P equals Q equals one half. Okay, so this is a second, this is called second order Runga Kutta. Okay, and in MATLAB, this is called uh, ODE23. Okay, so ODE23 is essentially built on this, uh, this numerical integration scheme. This is important enough that it deserves um, a big box. Okay, so this is what we get. What we did was we, uh, if we go over to the left board, just to remind ourselves, we assumed a generic integration of the form yk plus one equals yk plus delta t times some function phi. We get to cook phi up however we like. And we thought maybe these would be useful terms. And then we uh, expanded out in Taylor series and matched the Taylor series of our exact trajectory up to third order. And we found coefficients b, a, p, and q that were agreeable, that gave us nice error properties, okay? And what we come up with here is actually very interesting. So what this means is that what we've settled on is we take a half forward Euler step. We take a forward Euler step with time delta t over two, right? So we're at tk plus delta t over two, and this is a forward Euler step after time delta t over two. And then we evaluate our vector field at that half step, and we use that as the slope to take a full Euler step. This is how I think about this method. This is the second order runga kutta method. And it's the simplest in the family of runga kutta methods, of which um, there are many and they're extraordinarily useful. Okay, so one really nice thing about this um, is that it's explicit. Let's see if you can see, good. Um, it's explicit versus implicit, meaning I don't need uh, to solve any like nonlinear function to find yk plus one. Everything on the right hand side is in terms of tk's and yk's. Very, very useful. Okay, and it has third order local accuracy, local error. Right, this means it scales like the error is order delta t cubed locally, which means it's second order global. Okay, and that's in fact why it's called second order Runga Kutta, because we typically we care about the kind of global error properties. Um, Okay, so this is just a flavor for how you derive these things, okay? Um, it was a little tedious at points, but the basic idea is pretty straightforward, right? We can cook up any integration scheme we like. We can take half steps or three-quarter steps or, you know, Euler steps, whatever, and we're going to choose those specifically to give us better error properties. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to show you is the fourth order Runga Kutta scheme. I'm not gonna derive it because I don't think that there would be enough time uh, in this lecture to even come close. Even if I started from the beginning, I would barely make it. Um, but I think I can just write down the equations because if you really wanted to, if your boss said that you have to derive fourth order Runga Kutta, and in fact, this is an interview question uh, at a number of local Seattle firms. You should know the basic principles that are required to do this, okay? So this is a, an interview question a friend of mine asks uh, his potential hires. I think is a little mean. Okay, so the fourth uh, order, Runga Kutta, and this is ODE45, that we've, we've been using ODE45, I just haven't told you exactly what it is. This is a really great all-purpose integrator. So you have yk plus one equals yk plus delta t over six times f1 plus two f2 plus two f3 plus f4 Okay, that doesn't look so bad. I'm adding up a bunch of numbers. 
but we don't know what f1, f2, f3, f4 are, where f1 is f evaluated at t, k, y, k. Good. F2 is F evaluated at TK plus delta T over 2. And YK plus delta T over 2 F1. Interesting. F3 is F at TK plus delta T over 2. Uh, YK plus delta T over 2 times F2. And finally, F4 is F at TK plus delta T, YK plus delta T, F3. Okay, so let's break this down and see what's actually happening here. So it's kind of a cool algorithm. So basically, the logic here is as follows. I first evaluate my vector field at time TK, YK, right? That's the information I have. And I use that information to take a half forward Euler step in the F1 direction, right? This is just a half forward Euler step. And I probe my velocity field at that point in time and space, which gives me F2. Now, I think maybe F2 is better than F1 because that's um, already been refined. And so then I take a half forward Euler step using the vector field from F2 my better vector field direction. Finally, once I have F3, I take a full delta T Euler step in the F3 direction. And to get all of the error terms to cancel out, I add up some combination of these guys and I get YK plus one, okay? That's really what's happening. Now, since the name says fourth order Runge-Kutta, what do you think the local error property is? Right, so the global error property is going to be fourth order, right? So we have global error is like order delta t to the fourth. Local will be order delta t to the fifth. So think about that compared to forward Euler, say, right? Let's say I needed an error on the order of 10 to the minus four. So in forward Euler, I would need to take a tiny, tiny time step, like 0. 0.0001. And for runge Kutta, I can take a time step of 0. 0.1, right? I get away with so many uh, fewer integration steps that even though it's a little more expensive per time step, overall, for the same amount of um, accuracy, this is just the clear winner, okay? And so this is why this integration scheme is kind of the built-in favorite in MATLAB. This is the go-to integrator for most uh, scientists and engineers because it's fast, efficient, accurate, um, has good all-purpose properties. But it turns out that all integrators have weaknesses, even Runge Kutta fourth order. So it's a good first integration scheme to try. But what we're going to find later um, is that there's an entirely different class of integrators that are not based on this property of minimizing Taylor series error. Um, and I'll just tell you a tiny bit about that now, and we can look at it more in the next couple of lectures. Okay. So there's a whole family uh, of other integrators. I'm just going to name a couple of them. There's Adams Bashforth. Um, this one is used a lot when you're integrating fluid flows. So if I want to integrate uh, flow over a Boeing wing, I might use an Adams Bashforth integrator for some of the fluid terms. Okay, then there are stiff uh, integrators. So sometimes um, I have a system that has lots of different time scales, right? I have a system where there are really, really, really fast directions, and then there's big, important, slow directions. And that's kind of a stiff problem. And then what's really interesting is there's a whole family where instead of trying to minimize Taylor series error, you're trying to preserve some conserved quantity. So there's something called energy uh, conserving. These are called symplectic. 
Um, we might not talk about all of these integrators, but I just want you to be aware that there is an entirely uh, open universe of integrators out there at your disposal. However, the fourth order Rungakata really is the great go-to all-purpose integrator. Um, and so for the next couple of lectures, we're just gonna get our hands dirty with um, coding this up in MATLAB and trying it on cool systems. Okay, thank you. <laughs>